there are various different platforms out there to help you in general practice. But is Anima the one that is actually possibly the most advanced consultation platform out there for you? Well, we're going to find out in this episode as we've got Rachel joining us from Anima to share with us the new platform that they're developing and how it may help you in general practice. So let's take in hand to your primary care and learn. <music> Hello, EGP learners, and thank you for joining us on this blustery Wednesday morning afternoon. And hopefully you're going to have a great time hearing about this new product called Anima that basically claims to be the most advanced GP consultation platform out there. And we're joined today by Rachel, who's going to explain to us all about it. Tell us about yourself, Rachel. Hi, thank you so much, Dr. Gandhi. Thank you so much for hosting us. It's amazing to be here. We at the team at Anima are long time watchers and lurkers of the channel. So having a chance to showcase on here is uh, quite starstruck, I'll say. Um, so my name is Rachel. I thank am you. one of the co-founders of Anima. I spend most of my time helping GP practices and their teams using Anima to make sure it works as best as it can for them, helping them to suit it around their workflow and also helping them get their patients onboarded. So I'm joined today by I have Dr. James Cohen, who is one of our clinical engineers. He is lurking in the live chat, ready to take on uh, any questions mm -hmm. that come through. But what I will do today is just give you a little bit of a uh, overview of who we are at Anima, what we do, a bit about the team, and then basically take you through a demo, as I think that's definitely the best way to show you why we're claiming we are the most advanced online consultation platform going. And then obviously we'll leave time for some questions at the end. Mm -hmm. So okay. if I kick off then, um, so yep, we are a team, we are based in the UK, so we're all uh, based in the UK, support teams based in the UK. We're working with GP practices up and down the country to implement Anima to help them manage their online consultations and much, much more as you will see in our demo. As I mentioned, obviously Dr. James Cohen is here and the majority of our team are actually ex-clinicians. So my co-founder and Anima CEO, Dr. Champagne is a trained clinician. We also have an ex-ophthalmologist, ex-dermatologist on the team. And what this means is it's been really, really, when we speak to practices, when we engage with our users, what we can say is that, look, we've seen what it's like. The team have used EMIS, we've used System One, we've tried what's out there with in terms of integrations and how it all works together. And what we've done is we've tried to build what we wish existed in the world, what we wish the team had when they were working in practice before they moved over to help us build Anima. So, all that means is when we speak to our users and we can see the sheer volume of demand, the sheer volume of workload, we've already seen earlier this week the reports around GP numbers have been falling year on year since 2015, since that target was set. So we know that there's so much pressure on workforce out there at the moment. And so what we want to do, because who knows? Plans for workforce, we know it's super, super contentious. I know, Dr. Candy, you've got a lot on your channel already around that, so we're not going to cover that. Yeah. But what we can do is we can supercharge GPs, we can supercharge your practices and your teams, give you the tools and the information you need all in one platform to actually help you manage that demand safely, quickly. So I think what is probably best to do is actually if I just launch straight into the demo, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like both for the patients and then for a clinical team looking at what happens in Anima. So okay. if I hop over, I believe I'm sharing my screen or I will be in a second. Yep. There we go. Wonderful. Thank you. So as I'm loading that up, I think some viewers will be thinking, well, why Anima? There's so much out there, obviously, on eGP learning, so many, um, there's all these tools that are there to help you manage online consultations. But what I want to show you today is that Anima is the one that gives you everything you need all in one platform. So instead of four or five different programs where you're managing your appointments, your online consultations, contacting patients, video consultations, all spread out over the and however many different things you're using at the moment, plus your EHR, plus your EMIS, your system one, what Anima will do is we'll bring that all together for you and give you that really nice smooth workflow where you can manage your requests in a few minutes rather than a back and forward discussion. And the way we do that, and the, what, what I will show you here is essentially we will take an information complete history from your patients for you. And then for your practice team, what we do is we give you a really thorough and complete history that you can then review, 
decide what you, you want to do in terms of a management plan and then actually execute that management plan, save it all to the patient's record, all in one program and all in a few minutes as compared to bringing the patient in for an appointment or following up via text or phone because you haven't got the information that you need straight away. So what I'm showing you at the moment is the patient interface. So this is what a patient would see when they first enter their account. And the way that patients will do this, it's very kind of similar to um, some other platforms out there. Our practices at the moment are using a banner on their practice website, or they are um, sending out a text or an email inviting their patients to sign up. Now, one thing I want to uh, trail, because I said that we had a couple of exclusive features um, that we are, we've saved for today's stream. And the first one I'm going to show you now. So another thing at Anima that we take, we obviously take user feedback incredibly seriously, both from our clinical staff, our admin staff, and also from our patients. And actually, Dr. Gandhi, this is something that we spoke about um, when we first sort of met and I sort of walked you through Anima. Um, and one of the questions you mm -hmm. asked, and I think one of the questions that you said lots of your viewers ask when they are looking at products like this, is, well, what support is out there for multilingual, for patients who may struggle or have struggled to access digital tools previously, because English may not mm. be their first language. And so what I'm really, really excited to show you today, and this is a complete exclusive, no one has seen this before, we have saved this especially for eGP learning, is that we are building this out and we are very slowly rolling out our um, multilingual support. And so for example, over here, we now offer select modules and select um, interfaces in starting wow. with Hindi and Punjabi. So we've heard from practices up and down the country and in particular, especially in particular urban areas, that this is something that would make an mm -hmm. incredible difference to the access that their patients have. So for example, this is now available and this will take you through, and I will switch over to English to be able to show you this, but I just was really excited to show you, especially as this is something that we'd spoken about already, that we are yeah. rolling out these modules um, as, as we speak. And so obviously this is a very um, controlled and we're doing this kind of one module at a time to make sure that we have the best and most mm -hmm. useful coverage. But at the moment, what this will do is it will take a patient through a very general questionnaire, but it gives you that um, multilingual support. What I'm going to do then is I will switch back into English and that's what a patient can do at any time. Just flick back and um, switch into another language. So that's that one. Um, that's our brand new feature out um, and we will obviously be rolling out that um, over the next few months, making that coverage wider and wider. So if I jump into then the patient side, so patients can access Anima from their phone, tablet, computer. And what we will do is we will take them through one question at a time, what they would expect to be asked in any consultation, whether that is face to face or on the phone or by video. Obviously, we start with emergency symptoms, COVID screening. And then what patients will do is they will select from our clinical modules. And this is where we get into that really detailed and thorough information complete history that I mentioned earlier. So for example, I'm now on, uh, I have a new problem, I have an acute problem, and patients can select from all of these modules here, which you'll probably be able to see would cover nearly everything that you would expect to see come through a GP's doors. But what I can also do is I can start typing, for example, Ethica, and I can then select from the modules here themselves, and it will suggest which ones we I think are probably most likely to fit whatever the patient has typed in. So even if I put in my back mm -hmm. hurts, click search, I can then go into the back pain module. So if we start with this, mm -hmm. um, again, each module is mapped to the clinical guidelines, the relevant NICE guidelines and updated frequently to make sure that we're staying up to date with them. So again, we'll start with the very specific emergency screening for whatever presenting complaint that patient has come with. A very, again, a new feature that we have introduced, and this was actually off the back of a training session that we ran with a practice in Hampshire. And what they had said is that it would be very useful to know if a patient has changed their answers to an emergency screening question. So for example, if I say here, that would usually, that is considered as something that, well, maybe this patient should actually be seeking urgent care. But mm -hmm. now if I click previous and the patient tries to untick it, it will warn the patient that you've changed your answers 
please do consider seeking urgent care. Mm -hmm. And you'll see later that this is explicitly flagged to the, to the practice team that the patient has reversed their answers to that question. So I will continue anyway, just for the purpose of this demo, so you can mm -hmm. see what that looks like. And then again, we will say, please make sure this is not part of an injury. So I will take you through this reasonably quickly just to show you what patients will see. But essentially it is one question at a time and you will notice that we do try to limit the use of free text where clinically appropriate, where necessary. And that's mm -hmm. because what we've heard from practices is that patients will not necessarily volunteer the right or the most relevant or complete information if they are just given sort of three free text questions to answer. And that means that you sort of end up in the cycle of well, we've had something come in online, we've had a patient submit a request, but actually they've not given us everything we need to make mm. that confident clinical decision right now. And so then you're ringing the, the yeah. patient, you're texting them, and you're not getting the full benefit of what, you know, remote or what an online consultation platform should be giving you. So you'll see that we are trying to make sure that the patients are selecting very, very structured questions. But obviously, as you can see on the screen now, where it is necessary, where it's clinically appropriate, we do ask for further details. So for example, if I say, I take a breakfast. And then some final questions to show you. And you'll see that these are fully contextual. So for example, if I say that I'm female, we will ask questions that are pertinent to a female patient. If I had said that I was male, these questions would not appear. So you won't get a long list of non-applicables or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where relevant, we will cover any sort of mental health implications. Uh, For height and weight, for example, if the patient doesn't know, they're able to skip over. And then of course, the very final question is an opportunity for the patient to raise any ideas, concerns, and expectations covering what you would expect to see in any really good history. So for example, do they have any specific concerns? Is there anything specifically that they want? Is there something that they want to be able to achieve today? So there is always this opportunity to ask additional questions for the patient to leave additional comments at the end. They can also then bring up their answer history and review this before submitting. So if I submit my answers and say, yes, I'm sure, I'm happy for my practice to contact me straight away. They may not necessarily need to follow up with me and they'll know exactly what they want to do in terms of their management plan. And so that's me just saying, yep, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then I click finish. And then what's special about um, Anima in terms of why we ask patients to create their account, it means that they can track in their own dashboard what requests they have in progress, where it is in the kind of practices system. So they're not having to ring your practice or ask your admin or reception team, has someone seen my request? Is this being dealt with? They know that the practice has got it, they're looking at it and they will receive a response in due course. Now, as I mentioned that, when we come up here, this is all editable by the practice. And this is a really good way to communicate particular messages or to give patients information that they would need that's relevant to them being able to submit online requests. And we'll go into this in a little more detail when I show you the clinic side, but this is just to show you what the patients will see. So for example, you can set specific opening hours for Anima that can be different to your practice opening hours. So if you only want to accept online consultation requests in a particular part of the day, you can set that completely on your own. You don't need us to do it for you. You can do that within your own settings. And then you can also pop in any announcements here. So for example, if you want to give an estimation on when you when your practice team is likely to respond to requests, anything can go here. So this is just a demo that we have done for you here. So that's what it looks like for a patient and they will be able to see that. And as I said before, they can access this on their phone, on their tablet, on the computer. Our iOS and Android apps are due for release a little bit later in this spring. Uh, so they will also be able to access them as well. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the clinical program. And what the clinical program looks like is it is a desktop program that you download onto your computer and your entire practice team will download it and you will make your own account as well. So I hope that I am still sharing on my screen. Yep, still going. Wonderful. So this is what it would look like for you as a GP, admin, receptionist, clinical pharmacist, anyone in the practice team, um, as long as you are linked to an organization using Anima, will have access to your own dashboard. And this is where you will manage these patient requests that are coming through. And this is where we start to get into, right, this is why we say that this is by far the most advanced platform that is out there. So what I'm going to show you is what the request that we just did and what that looks like and how you would manage that and save it to record. There's also a host of other features over here that we will dig into a little bit after that as well. So this is what you will see when you log in and the way to make this dashboard sort of manageable and mean that you can work through these requests coming in really quickly is using these filters. So you can, for example, only show medical if you are a clinician or only admin if you are working on the admin team and you're mm -hmm. dealing with those types of requests. You can also show requests that are assigned specifically to you. So you almost have your own personal checklist of what requests do I need to work through today. Mm -hmm. For this, I'm just gonna show all the ones that are actionable. So these are all the ones that the practice has to take action on. And you'll see at the top that this is the back pain requests that I just submitted. So today at 1243. You'll see down here that we have got some color coding just to help with decision support, just to help you triage that dashboard at a glance. You can order that dashboard to bring all of the red requests to the top. And what it means is that it's just that the patient has reported something in their request, which may suggest that it needs to be looked at maybe in a little bit more timely fashion or a little bit more urgently. What you can do then to find out, well, what's actually mm -hmm. going on here, if I click once on a patient request, you'll see that it brings up this side panel on the right hand side. And again, this is a snapshot of how that patient is doing. It can give you a little bit more context as to what they've reported in their request and help you work through your dashboard. It's not necessarily everything you need to know what needs to happen next, but it gives you a really nice overview. And again, something uh, quite new that we've introduced over the last week as a result of feedback. Again, if I hover over some of these tiles, I will be able to see what specifically that patient said in their request that relates to that clinical indicator. So for example, I can see, well, this person has reported red flags in their request. What are they? I can see that that's because it said that it was worse mm -hmm. on stress. So instead of necessarily having to weed through three pages of a PDF printout to find what is the red flag in this request, I can see that at a glance. And now that gives mm -hmm. you a really nice indication of what you might need to do next. So then if I double click on a patient request, what Anima will do is Anima will generate the notes for you. So Anima will generate a full report based on what the patient has said. So we are just presenting this information to you as the patient filled in to their request. So obviously treat it as you would with what a patient would report to you in any other consultation. But what it means is that it's really readable. It's really concise. And it means that you have these very useful summary headings that means your eye is just drawn down the page and you can just read this through, see where there's anything of concern, see if there's anything missing, anything that you would like to know more about. This is what I mentioned earlier. So you'll have this big red alert up the top, which says, which will tell you if the patient has reversed any of their answers to those initial emergency screening questions as well. And then a little bit further down, if there are any red flags present, you will be told so here. So this is just a sort of presentation as you would expect maybe from a colleague. And it means that you can just have a read down, see if there's anything that you'd like to know a little bit more about. At the bottom, there is always a full list of the patient's raw answers. So you can see exactly what they said for each mm -hmm. question. So if you do need to do a little bit more digging, that's all there for you. But otherwise, this report at the top is what we found practices are able to just read down, skim through, see what the real issue is, see what the patient needs, if they have any kind of concerns, expectations, and then just crack straight on with managing that request. If, 
for example, there is anything that you do need to clarify or that you need more information on, instead of finding the patient's phone number, finding their email or asking your reception team to contact them, what you can do is you can actually message the patient directly from within their request. So if this person has mentioned that they're, for example, taking ibuprofen or they have said something that you need more information about, what you can do is you can just say, I need to clarify something and then ask, for example, what? dosage of medication are you taking? That will be sent to the patient. They will receive an email and a text notification, and it will also appear in their Anima dashboard that their practice has sent them a message. They are then able to reply, and they are also able to reply with photos. So if they didn't necessarily send a photo in the initial request, you are then able to get that a little bit later on. For some modules, such as a derm, a new skin problem, something like that, we will ask for a photo in the original request, but mm -hmm. for, for something like back pain, we may not have necessarily asked for a, request, uh, for a photo up front, but it means that you can always get that by asking the patient. So this gives you super easy two-way messaging with any patient that submits a request to you, and you can get all the information you need straight away before moving on. When you've reviewed the request, when you've reviewed the patient report, and you've got any sort of further information that you need, you're ready to build this management plan, you know what you want to do next. Practice teams can come over to the Manage tab, and this is where you will build that management plan. So using the categories on the left-hand side and then the search boxes here, what you'll see is that we have front-loaded the most common options for that particular complaint. So for back pain, we've got the most common options here. If you scroll down, there is a long, long list of various options. And if you can't find the one you want, you can also add your own. So if there is a management option that you cannot find in the pre-populated list, you can always add your own one and then save it for later use. So for example, if I select, maybe I will bring this person in for a face-to-face -face mm -hmm. consult. And then actually I'll select from, there's some patient education options that are also pre-populated here for you. So this person has reported back pain, sciatica. I can add, for example, exercise. Now, what is a kind of to trail an upcoming feature as well here? At the moment, this will, um, it will generate tasks for you in your EHR or in Anima, depending on how you like to handle it. So when I save this to the system one record that I have open, it will save these management options as tasks. What we have upcoming a little bit later this year and what we're currently integrating with is both with GP Connect and with the e-prescription service, which will mean that if I book them in for an appointment, I will be able to directly book them into my practice's appointment book from this scar and do it separately. And the same with prescriptions. When I select a medication here, it will then go straight through the EPS integration to actually then issue that prescription without you having to switch backwards and forwards. So stay tuned for that. That is coming a little bit later in the spring as well. But anyway, I have selected what I want to do next. And you can pick as many of these as you like. And then I'm going to click Continue. And again, what Anima will do is we will generate the patient communications for you. So instead of you kind of, once you've decided what you want to do, and then you're still going to have to email or write a text to the patient or ring them to tell them what's happening, what Anima mm -hmm. will do is based on the options that you have selected in the previous screen, we will put together this message for you. And this will be sent directly to the patient to update them and tell them what it is you have decided to do. You can change this as much as you like. And you can edit it, you can get rid of it all if you would like and write your own. But if you do like it, we have done that hard work for you. And that means you can just carry straight on and send it to the patient. So I'm going to click sign off and save to record to finish this now. This is just telling me that you are signing this off and saving it to the record. You won't be asking for the patient to review the plan first. And that's fine. That's the kind of mm -hmm. default. That's the recommended path that most practices will take. This screen then shows you what will be saved to the patient record. And what you'll notice is that Anima will automatically code everything for you. So all of the relevant SNOMED codes based on what the patient has put in their request. So based on their symptoms, and then also based on what you have selected in your management options will be added right here. And this will be saved in line to the patient record at the end of this, which I will also show you. The only thing you have to do on this page is either add this to an existing problem. So this is a list of all of the diagnoses that this patient already has saved in their system one record. 
So you can just select this and add it to that particular problem. Or you can search for a new problem. And this is just to make sure that the patient has indeed submitted the right request for what it is that they have. So I've now added a new problem and then that's been automatically coded for me. All of this will be saved in line to the patient record, including your chat history. So any messages that you and the patient have uh, submitted and exchanged with each other, including any photos, and then also the patient communications that I just showed you. So the sign off email that goes to the patient will also be saved as an attachment as well. So click continue, and this is your final chance to review everything that you have done, have a look at everything and make sure that you are happy. And then when you click sign off and save to record, System one will tell me that this has now been successfully saved. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to go and sign in just to show you what this looks like. So if I look for that particular patient that I was looking after and look at their system one record, and if I just go to quick glance and then scroll down, these are how many we have saved, <laughs> you'll see that this is the request that we just went through, so today at 12.55, and this is the um, diagnosis that came through. And then you'll see that everything, the history, the plan, the management, any messages, and all the codes are saved directly in line to system one, as if it was you writing those notes yourself. So it's not a separate PDF. It's not anything that you have to copy and paste, nothing you have to upload. Mm -hmm. It's all done for you with just a click of a button. And that is essentially how you will manage and sign off a patient request in Anima. And that's how we've seen practices that are using Anima take their request times down from you know, 10, 12 minutes. I've heard people saying that their telephone triage is now up to 15 minutes sometimes into just mm -hmm. a few minutes. If you have that information complete history at the outset and you know exactly what the patient is looking for and what they want, then it becomes much, much easier for you as a clinical team or for, as you, for your admin team to work through and put together that management plan and then execute it all in one place. So that is the kind of core workflow. That's mm -hmm. how a patient would submit a request. That's how a practice team would come in, have a look at that patient request mm -hmm. and then manage it. What I do want to show you is a couple of things that I pointed out on the left-hand side. So these are more tools to help you streamline your workflow, to help Anima work exactly how you would like it to for your specific practice. So if I start over here, one thing that we've heard from practices, especially if they are using their patient care coordinators or if they're using their admin teams to come through and to look at their um, incoming online requests and triage those requests, is they want a way to do that really, really quickly and really easily. So when you come in the morning, you can see everything that's available to you and just come down really mm -hmm. quickly and share it across the team. We also have GPs who say at the moment they are receiving, you know, repeat prescriptions that aren't for them, it could have gone to the clinical pharmacist, or inappropriate requests essentially ending up with an inappropriate team member, and that just adds more time to being able to manage these online requests coming through. So what I can do here on our quick assign page is I can, if I take off this one so I can see all of them, these are all of the requests coming through. And what I can do is I can select as many of these as I like. Over here, I can indicate if any of these requests are high priority, add a due date and add a note for the person that I am assigning this request to. Mm -hmm. And then finally, this table at the bottom gives me a bird's eye view of my entire organization's capacity, availability, making it really, really easy for me to see, well, this person, they're working today, they, don't, they haven't maxed out their number of maximum assignments. So actually, I think they probably have capacity to take on these requests. And all I would have to do is click Assign. And those requests have now been assigned to Dr. Karp. So using the Quick Assign page has been a really fantastic way for admin teams or for anyone really to come down and very, very quickly make sure that incoming requests are assigned appropriately across your teams rather than doing it one by one. Mm -hmm. Next up, so lots of practices really love um, how easy, yeah, 
how, what they're using to contact patients at the moment. And so being able to text a patient, email a patient, quickly send them a message and attach a file. We've seen, especially over COVID and being able to quickly send out those messages has been incredibly effective. In Anima, you can do that as well. So in addition to what I showed you during the request where you can send the patient a message, you can do that right here. And you can search for a patient's contact details, for example, directly in your EHR. So directly in System 1 or EMIS. For example, I'm going to search for myself. And then it will come up, tell me what contact details are saved in the patient's record. And I can then add that patient to the recipient list. I can then choose from a templated message where I request that the patient completes a specific request. So maybe if you're asking uh, your asthma patients or your diabetes patients to complete their regular reviews, I will use that. And then the message again will be automatically generated for you. And all you'll have to do is click send message and the patient will receive that invitation. And there'll be then a invitation waiting for them in their Anima dashboard, asking them to complete whatever review it is that you've sent. Another thing to point out here that, that practices have found incredibly valuable is that you can import patient lists. So you can send up to 1,000 patients at a time a bulk message. And the most popular mm -hmm. way we've seen with practices that have been onboarding um, is to get that via a exported list from your EMIS or from your System 1. And you can then upload that into Anima and it will take all of the patient's names and contact details and you'll then be able to send out a bulk message all in one go. So again, really useful for inviting chronic patients um, or any others to join in that way. So that's also another way that you can use Anima to contact your patients all in one. You don't have to switch over to another channel, another program. You don't have to go hunting around in their EHR for their contact details because it is all here for you. And that's a really easy way to get in contact with your patients and also to start the onboarding process, sending out a invitation to ask them to sign up and create their Anima account so that they can access online consultations. Now, coming up is our next exclusive feature, and I'm really, really excited to show this one as well. This is something that, um, again, no one has seen. We've been hurriedly working away on this, making sure that it's ready and um, good to go. So what we've been really excited about is our video consultation um, capabilities. We know again during COVID this has really taken off um, and having that another way to manage patients and directly manage them within the platform. So now you're not using a separate program for video consultations. You can do that all in here. And so I'm just going to show you, for example, the way that Anima, again, massively will speed this up is that you can come in and you will be able to set your availability for when you would like to manage your video consultations in Anima. You'll pop all of that in here, for example. And then if you come over to video consultations and schedule a new consultation, what we will do is you can pop in the patient's details. You can also search by the NHS number in your EHR as well. And then what we will do is Anima will broker the scheduling and availability for you. So there's no more going back and forward, trying to find a time that works for you and the patient. If you want mm -hmm. to schedule them in for a video consultation, all you have to do is enter what is it that you would like to discuss. And then you can either let the patients choose from availability that you've already set, or you can offer them very specific slots. And then you'll be able to send over, for example, up to five slots that they can pick from, and they will then be able to select the one that suits them. So you don't have to say, oh, does nine o'clock on Friday suit you? No. And then you'll have to text mm -hmm. them or call them or again, get your, get your reception team to find out when would work. Mm -hmm. You can do this all in one go straight from here. So again, this is another way to build in what you may be using kind of separately at the moment if you're using another program to host schedule run your video consultations in anima you'll be able to do all of it so you'll be able to schedule them you'll be able to sort out availability with your patients and then you'll actually be able to host and run the consultations directly here from your calendar so you can see i've got one coming up and you would be able to start that video call straight away so finally the thing that gets people very excited and I think has been a real uh, game changer and something that I know practices have struggled with before 
if they come to us and they say we're worried that you know online consultation is going to introduce a new route in and we're going to fight we're going to struggle we're already so busy mm. on the phones we're already so busy with people struggling to get appointments what you can do in anima is you can very easily as i showed you before personally as so you as an individual team member at your practice you can come in and you can set your working hours now that will tell you and the rest of your team when you're working and when you're available to deal with online requests. So for example, if you only work part-time, you can untick as many of these as is necessary and then set your actual specific working hours here. And then for the days you are working, you personally can set your maximum number of assignments that you would like to be assigned to you at any one point. So if you have however many patient requests coming in on the dashboard, everyone in your team can then set a personal request limit for them and that means that you can control your caseload far more in a far more granular way than you can with anything else at the moment so you can say on mm -hmm. a day-by-day -day basis this is how much i know that i will have capacity for because for example i know that i'm working in the morning or i know that i have urgent teletriage in the morning so i know that on tuesdays i'm only going to be able to manage five online requests coming through anima so that's what you can do personally for you yourself and then as an organization, what you can do is you can set your organization-wide request limits. So this means that you will always know at any one time how much demand is going to be coming through on Anima. You can set your active request limits. So that's how many mm. requests are being handled at the moment. And that means that no more can be submitted until some of those requests have been resolved. Then overall daily requests, which means that once you hit that point, the Anima consultation service will show as unavailable to patients because of that capacity. And that sort of messaging okay. is something that we work really closely with practices on to sort of understand how do we communicate this to patients and just tell them this is so we can safely and quickly manage the requests that we have coming in. And you can break that down really granularly and, for example, split that out so you can have a different request limit for admin requests and for medical requests. So if you know that your pharmacist team actually have quite a lot of capacity and they can manage a lot of repeat prescription requests, for example, you may mm -hmm. want to bump that up a little bit higher. And then down here, you can set patient personal request limits, which will limit the number of individual requests that one patient can submit. So that means you won't have patients resubmitting lots of requests, maybe for the same thing, just because they haven't had a response to their first one. So again, it will help you have that really granular control over your demand, your caseload. And then finally, of course, set access patient days and times. So if you want to switch off on weekends, if you want to disable on bank holidays, if you want to set different times, these are the ones that were displayed on the patient dashboard that I showed you earlier. You can do that all from within your own organization setting. You don't need to contact anyone. It will all happen automatically for you once you have done this. And then I will just save the changes that I made here. The final thing, is for your practice team and especially for your maybe your practice manager or your super admin at your practice they will be able to access this again kind of bird's eye overview of when is everyone working what have they put as their maximum requests mm -hmm. to help you manage that request and balance it across your team they can also come in and then manage some of the additional details so they can come in and amend working hours change additional requests to help you have and maintain that really granular control here is the practice announcements that we showed you earlier. And then of particular interest, especially when we speak with um, and when we work with our PCN partners or CCGs, ICSs, when you kind of get more into that system wide working, what we found that practices are really um, looking for and find really valuable is having this ability to almost have a self-service um, way of accessing audit logs, reporting, and we know how valuable that is, especially for things like COF and IIF. So again, you can come in here and you can see a very granular breakdown of all activity across your practice, see who is managing different requests and what is happening um, at each level. And then the activity reports will show you trends across your practice. So when a request is being submitted, who is dealing with them? Are there any kind of trends around times, days of the week that you're seeing a lot of uptake of um, requests being submitted by patients? Again, to help you balance your workload and manage that um, across the team. 
I will pause there because that is a very whistle-stop tour of what the platform looks like and how you will manage your patient requests coming through. And then some of the really exciting features that we have that set Anima apart in terms of being able to um, control and predict your demand coming through and making sure that it works for your specific practice because we know how many different ways there are um, to run workflows and to make it work specifically for your team. And most of what you, a lot of what you have seen and what I've pointed out has been as a result of direct user feedback. You've said, look, this mm -hmm. is the way our practice works. For example, one of our practices in Oxfordshire, all their patients have an assigned doctor and they wanted it to be so that their patients could only submit requests when their assigned doctor was working because that's what helps them to manage their demand and manage their mm -hmm. case they're coming through. And then that's exactly what we have been able to give them. We have been able to set up a requirement where patients can only submit requests when they have an assigned doctor allocated to them and then only when that allocated doctor is working. So I will pause there because I'm really keen to um, hear from you, Dr. Gandhi, and to take any questions that have come in um, and to kind mm -hmm. of hover over anything that um, I skimmed over. But thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you for that presentation, Rachel. Uh, um, again, even though I've seen this uh, a few weeks back, actually, there's been so many significant changes and improvements and a couple of really nice little things. Yeah. You know, the fact that within a, a few weeks, you've been able to turn around the translation thing it is mind-blowing to be honest um and, and that for me is a huge thing you know the fact that as a platform you're able to offer translations and stuff in terms of supporting patients to be able to use the platform so much more effectively because we know that with health inequalities and some of the other challenges that actually that's where patients struggle you know online access in, in some areas is also very challenging just because of infrastructure and stuff but when they add in complication of language on top of that so much more so really nice to see that improvement and, and yeah i can see that being so valuable to so many different areas particularly as that expands into other languages as well i think you said it was hindi and punjabi currently and you're looking at other ones moving forward is that correct yes i know polish was on your list so uh, yes. we may we will bump that right up as well <laughs> <laughs> Cool. And in terms of, the, I guess, one of the things that really impresses me is the way that the platform seems to be so um, integrated in, in the way that it works and the fact that, like you say, everything's in one place. So that hopefully you're not having to go back and forth to different aspects. And I can definitely see you still need the patient record, obviously, there to check the, you know, various history aspects and other kind of things as you're processing it. But the fact that you can use that central dashboard to basically do most of the, the, the work that you're trying to do, the allocation work in particular, and, and the, the streamlined way it flows, uh, that's quite interesting to see that, you know, the, the way that that can function and stuff in terms of practice teams being able to manage that effectively. Um, you mentioned about questions, and we've definitely got some questions, but we have got some comments first of all, so I'm going to bring those on. Um, so we've got a comment from uh, Karen Fido. Um, we started <laughs> using Anima in the past last month and love the fact that we can cap the number of online requests for each staff member on each day. I mean, wow, you know, the, the fact that clinicians can cap the workload in itself is an amazing thing. Um, but the fact that the system helps them to do that, also really important and, you know, great to hear that it can work and stuff. Also a shout out to Karen, because Karen, I know you are supposed to be on leave today. So thank you ever so much um, for spending your lunchtime uh, <laughs> hearing my voice again. Um, but yeah, no, thank you. It's, it's great to hear that that's making a huge difference to you and your team. So you mentioned about integration with clinical systems and you, you mentioned system one and, and EMIS. Um, I guess shout out, there are some other clinical systems out there. Is that <laughs> something that's planned? Um, and if so, when? Any ideas on that? Yeah, so we know vision, um, especially as we look into Scottish and Welsh practices, that's where there's a much bigger market share. Um, EMIS and System 1 we chose just because we knew, look, most practices are going to be using one of those mm -hmm. two. Vision is certainly on our um, roadmap as well. We have started the integration process, so we are with them and we're sort of in the test environment with them at the moment. So you can expect to see that, I would certainly say, before the summer. Um, but that's definitely that's definitely on our list. And then I think we will have pretty good coverage um of of all the ehrs out there cool and um, you mentioned obviously having your own app in terms of patients being able to interact with anima and obviously there is the website interface as well is this something that's going to be looked at in terms of sitting behind the nhs app so obviously many practices have been asked to focus behind that is that something that you see happening in the near future 
I think, so again, NHS app and NHS login are things that we know practices find very valuable for integration. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we ask patients to sign up in the way they do at the moment is because we will ask them for very specific personal details, which then allows us to cross check with the personal demographic service, the PDS. We are integrated mm -hmm. with that to then double check that the patient is actually registered at that practice. So you're not then mm -hmm. sort of getting scenarios where patients are submitting requests to a random practice or to a sister practice, a practice down the road. So at the moment, we are kind of capturing that and that sort of gives us a level um, and gives the practices a level of certainty that the right patients are there to contact. But certainly those are another two, I think, if we're going <laughs> to, our growing list of NHS integrations, the NHS API team, I think love us um but they are suddenly if we're going to prioritize we've got gp connect eps and then those two nhs integrations i think are going to sure. be really valuable just to have a kind of that single front door that you talk about exactly mm -hmm. and i guess in terms of support you mentioned obviously some key parts that are already baked into the system in terms of onboarding patients and, and, and stuff what kind of support is available to help them manage that process because it is a different platform you're asking them to use where from what they may currently be using and obviously a different interface in terms of what they may have come across in the past yeah so every practice that on boards with us you have access to a dedicated account manager and that person is your central port of contact and then end to end we would stay with you and your practice team until the practice team are expert users and then actually until your patients are expert users as well and i think what mm -hmm. we find is that it takes up an enormous amount of time for a practice team to help their patients with things like this yep. and so we will take that on for you so we've run previously ppg information sessions either mm -hmm. on site or via webinar and it's actually really effective to have us come down because we can answer the questions that maybe the practice team would struggle with or it would just take them a silly amount of time and it's just another thing to add to their list so that is just as standard we will engage with that for you provide you with the materials you'll need for your practice. So leaflets, posters, things like that. Patients then also have access to mm -hmm. a sort of online wiki, um, which they can access directly within the app itself. And then we didn't okay. go through it, but both the practice and patient teams um, have access to a sort of inbuilt guided tool. So at any point, if they get stuck or lost or they don't quite know what they're doing, um, they can just mm -hmm. go and refresh themselves in there. So there's a kind of combination of, yes, you'll always have access to a person who can help practices and patients walk through everything that you need via email, live chat, etc. But then there's also a lot of kind of self-serve materials as well. So if you just need to pop onto a computer and just read a few articles to get you up to speed, then that's all there for you too. Okay. Um a couple of more challenging questions. And um, so this one is asked almost everyone who comes onto the stream because people want to know. Um, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? Yes. So we have a kind of few different plans and it basically depends on who's using it. So if you're an individual mm -hmm. practice coming along and you want to use Anima, you either haven't ever used online consultation before and you want to make a start or you're using something at the moment, but it's not quite working for you and you'd like to switch individual practices we offer the platform for free what we do say is obviously bar a fair usage policy around sending sms's sms's are quite expensive um but you will have an included number a bundle of sms that will come for free with you anyway and we'll sort of work that out with you It'll depend on how big your patient list size is and that's just to help you get patients onboarded but for individual practices who just want to get started, want to crack on and start using Anima, we offer that for free. When we do start charging is when we speak to PCNs, CCGs and ICSs, because one, that obviously means that we're working across a network and Anima is designed with this network working in mind. There are kind of specific mm -hmm. features that are in there already, like the reporting analytics audit that are in there and then there's also forthcoming features such as a multidisciplinary chat which we're expecting to then link up teams individuals across an entire network and allow them to sort of discuss and collaborate on patient requests which i know again is going to be really important especially with some of the things mm -hmm. in the latest contract about pcn working extended hours needing to be across mm -hmm. an entire network it's going to be really important so to have access to those kinds of features and to make it work as best as it can across a network with PCNs, CCGs, ICSs, we then have uh, particular payment plans, which again, work on a very similar basis based on um, patient list size and a 
broadly comparable to what is out there, um, if not much, much cheaper, given how much functionality is included within the Anima platform. And that will come with, you know, video, texts, all of that together. Okay, cool. And in terms of start going down the route of Anima and stuff, what is kind of the, like the lead time that they need to be aware of? And also what information would you recommend the practices look at in order to prepare themselves for starting with Anima? Because obviously there's that pre-change element that always has to happen. Yeah, any tips, any uh, experience from that? So um, in terms of time, it is, we work around the practice. It is entirely dependent on, you know, how many of your team do you have in? I know so many people are struggling with staff sickness at the moment, but we've designed Anima in a way that actually mm -hmm. genuinely anyone could go along to the website. You can download Anima right now. And theoretically you can get started in a morning. And when we've actually run training sessions, we have trained up entire practices in a morning or a lunch break. So in terms of time dedication needed to get up to speed with the platform, learn how it works, to learn what you'd need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to manage those requests coming in. You've seen kind of how intuitive the platform is and you've seen how much support there is kind of embedded into that. It's, you know, again, it can be done very, very quickly, but if your practice needs a bit more time, then again, we're there for you and we can stagger that and we'll be there for you each step of the way. In terms of information needed, again, we've designed it in such a way so that you shouldn't really need there's no pre-reading, there's no like test that you need to pass before mm -hmm. you can start using it or anything like that. What probably is useful is, and I know that you've put it in the um, description down below, is obviously get on a call with one of us or one of the Anima account managers, and we will help you. We will walk you through it step by step so that you know you've got someone who's helping you implement this as quickly and as best as possible for your particular setup. What we find is that practices are very different in the way that they are managing their patients, they're managing their appointment lists in the morning, um, you know, things like having assigned doctors. So definitely, mm -hmm book a call with us. Otherwise, on our pay on our website, there is a free uh, browser based demo, which anyone with an NHS email address can access. And it means you can just kind of walk through it in your own time, see some, mm -hmm. some of the features that we have showed you today. Um, there's a few obviously new things that are in the live version that aren't in that demo, um, but it gives you a little bit of a flavor of what's there. And then once you've kind of seen that work for yourself, and um, then of course, get in contact and we're, we're able to kind of spin you up in, in an afternoon. Sure. And as Rachel yeah. mentioned, if you do want to have a look at those um, videos and also if you do want to check out the link to book a call with Anima and stuff, those links are down in the description on the YouTube channel. Or if you're listening on the podcast, it will be in the description below and stuff. And um, feel free to look at those and use those. Pretty intuitive. It's a Canly link for booking the demo. So most people should know how that works. And, and like I said, the video works easily and effectively. Basically shows you everything that we've demonstrated and um, not as much. We've covered definitely a bit more for you and stuff. So I hope people, people find that effective and useful in terms of their practices and stuff. Thank you, Rachel, for your time. I found it really useful. And seeing that progression of changes that have happened, even in the short space of time since I had the opportunity to watch Anima demonstration, I think it was only about three or four weeks ago. So absolute progression in terms of what's happening. So really keen to see that. And obviously, if people do want to check out um, the links and stuff, do have a look down below. And thank you for your time. Really appreciated you know, being able to share this with our EGP learners so they can see what looks like the most advanced GP consultation platform around. And I think that's pretty true, to be honest. There's definitely some parts on there I have not seen in other platforms. The flow works really nicely and keen to see where this is going forward in the future and stuff. So definitely check this out because I'm sure we'll be sharing some more stuff from Anima in the near future when you guys have some more updates. It should probably happen quite soon by the looks of it, to be honest. <laughs> Look forward Thank to it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. As always, EGP learners, if you do have any comments or questions, let me know. I'm more than happy to tackle those for you and then send them on to Rachel and the team if needs be. And as ever, let us know what you think in terms of this episode. We will catch you in the next episode as we continue to tech enhance your primary care and learning. Catch you later. Thank you.